So, you're here for my story, are you? I'll admit, it's a grand one, but not one for the faint of heart. You sure you're ready? <laughs> Who am I kidding? Of course you're ready. You were part of it too, after all. You took part in the epic battles written in the pages of history and lived to see another day. Unless, of course, you're still in it. Perhaps this rambling tale comes to you in the midst of your journey, during an evening's respite from the chaos. Well, I suppose there's no way for me to know now, is there? In recent weeks, I've become known as the guy who combines math and video games. Well, today, I'm going to give you all a little history lesson. Today, I tell you the story of the epic battle between school administrators around the globe and kids who just want to game. Richard, hit that intro. This may come as a shock to many of you, but I was once in the third grade. Chills, I know, but this is where my covert gaming journey began. You see, Every Wednesday, my teacher would take us to the school's computer lab so that she could take a break from putting up with our silly bands and pencil grip based economy. And during this time, we were allowed to either play some sort of weird typing game where a big chicken would yell at you about letters, or some math games where you had to do fast addition problems to try and win a drag race, or do some fast subtraction problems to try and win a drag race or do some fast multiplication problems to try and win a drag race. Seriously, why were they always racing games? What was up with that? And so, for my first few jaunts to the computer lab, I raced my heart out and endured the ramblings of that insane chicken until a friend of mine pulled me aside and told me something that changed my life forever. He said, hey, kid, come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look, just be calm, and come with me to CoolMathGames.com. For the uninitiated of you, CoolMathGames.com might sound like another home to some uninspired math-based racing games, but the word math in the title is a ruse, a deliberate lie to hide the truth from your teachers as they walk by and ask what website you're on. And the truth is that it's just a whole bunch of Flash games that have nothing to do with math. Seriously, there is not a multiplication sign to be found here. Looking for some addition? Sorry, pal, you've come to the wrong place. Numbers? The only number we care about here is three. As in Balloon's Tower Defense 3. This game was my jam back in the day. Nowadays, there's a whole bunch of tower defense games, but as far as I know, the Balloon series was the first. The game is simple in concept and, well, simple in execution. You got some balloons that move along the track. You got some monkeys that can pop the balloons in a variety of ways. You get some money for popping balloons to buy upgrades or more monkeys, and you lose lives every time a balloon reaches the end of the track. On this simple formula were hours and hours and hours of my life spent. There was just something so satisfying watching these monkeys pop all these balloons, managing your money in a process that honestly taught me a lot more about large number addition and subtraction than math racer 27 ever could and hot damn is this the slowest game i have ever played going back to it today seriously the monkeys and balloons move at a snail's pace the dart monkey throws so slow it can straight up miss an oncoming balloon and building up enough money to upgrade that boomerang guy or tack shooter takes forever yeah, looking back, maybe this game wasn't as good as I remember, but back then, it didn't matter how good the games were, the simple thrill of getting away with something was enough. But Balloons Tower Defense 3 wasn't the only goodie that cool math games had to offer. There were also gems like Meeblings, a puzzle game where you needed to get all these little ball guys to the end using their various abilities. The blue dudes would send other Meeblings flying, the yellow ones could pull them in, the red ones can melt the floor, the green ones can grow into trees, the list goes on and on. There are few things more nostalgic to me in this world than the sound of a whole bunch of Meeblings screaming as they get sucked into an industrial grade fan because I couldn't figure out the puzzle. There was also Robom, quite possibly the easiest game I have ever played until you get to level 13, which is literally impossible. Yeah, they weren't all winners. 
but Bloxors was quite possibly the best game I've ever played, and I'm only sort of joking. It is the literal definition of the old adage, simple, classic. You play as two cubes stuck together, you gotta roll around and find a way to slide into a one by one hole without toppling off the edge. This game is seriously so fun. It was great when I was eight years old and it's still great at 22. It's genuinely tricky, requires you to think ahead and learn patterns, and honestly engages my brain way more than a bunch of quick multiplication questions ever did. Huh, it's almost like video games can actually be a tool to enrich your brain and help children learn problem solving skills and critical thinking. Who would have guessed? Me? As the years went on, I would frequent cool math games and other sites like it, secretly enjoying games like Fireboy and Watergirl. Not just a pretty cool 2D puzzle platformer, but a co-op 2D puzzle platformer. Me and one of my good friends at the time were absolute monsters at this. There's like five different versions with probably 30 levels in each, and we dominated them all over the years. Sadly, while recording gameplay footage for this video, I only had one other person around, and that was my assistant Richard, and I would rather die than work with him. So I had to try and control both characters at the same time, do not recommend, but to my friend who fought with me in the trenches of the Ice Temple, you'll always be the water girl to my fire boy. And who would I be if I didn't mention classics like Snail Bob, another great puzzle game that, despite having a literal snail as the main character, was somehow more fast paced than Bloons Tower Defense 3. There was Run, the floatiest endless runner platform I have ever played with an absolutely bopping soundtrack. And yo, they released Bloons Tower Defense 4? And it's got a mortar now? I don't think I can stress just how much better this game is than 3. It's got a whole bunch of new towers, new upgrades for the old ones. It actually has a background music, even if it's just the same chord progression on loop, and it still gets drowned out by the sound of the cannon. And baby steps, I guess. Oh yeah, and there's a speed up button. The future is now, kids. But it wasn't all fun in games and the battle of gaming in school. Ironic, right? Because while our little cool math games ruse might have fooled the teachers and administrators in the beginning, they would eventually wise up to our shenanigans. Before, this great gaming battle had been nothing more than a few minor skirmishes. But one day, in middle school, the IT department would fire the first true shot. They introduced on all the computers in the school a little thing that we insiders like to call game blockers. Now, it didn't matter if you were in class or not. If you tried to type in the words miniclip.com onto any school computer, you were met with a big old screen saying that you didn't have access to that site. But if you think students around the world were just going to take this lying down, you would be sorely mistaken. The battle of gaming in school had begun. Students would work tirelessly, searching for new gaming websites that the school wouldn't block. Once one was found, news would spread like wildfire, and before you knew it, the next day everyone was playing balloons again. If the teachers would block that, well then, someone would find a free VPN extension for Google Chrome, and then the floodgates would be open once again. This struggle raged on back and forth, with no sign of stopping, until one tiny little development in the gaming landscape changed everything. I'm talking about the age of mobile gaming. By this time I was in high school and pretty much everyone I knew had a smartphone of some kind. And these things weren't owned by the school or limited to the library. We could play subway surfers wherever we damn well pleased. Also real quick disclaimer, I feel like I should mention that you probably shouldn't play games in school and you should pay attention during your class, try and get good grades because they'll really actually help you later on down the line. I know it sucks, but okay, just rant over. I'm not going to talk about every mobile game that I played during high school because we'd be here all day, but I don't think there was any that I played more than, you guessed it, Balloons Tower Defense 5. Oh damn, they got submarines now? And they're absolutely broken? What? Yeah, I played this game, I'll be honest, way too much. They've got this bonus thing in there called a mastery mode that you can only unlock once you've gotten every single ribbon in the game, which is a ridiculous request. I'm pretty sure they put it in there as a joke. But yeah, once upon a time, I unlocked that. 
and then I lost my phone in a monsoon at my friend's house and had to start all over. True story. And I was well on my way to unlocking it again. But what can I say? There's just so many little improvements, more interesting tracks, better music, more towers with branching upgrade paths, an option to have the next round start immediately after the previous one ended so you don't have to click start a million times. It's great. I think the only thing it doesn't have is the triple spike apult, one of the many casualties of this conflict. Rest in peace, my brother. Rest in peace. Most of the games on the app store at that time were single player, but the ones that me and my friends gravitated towards were almost always multiplayer ones. Clash Royale was a pretty mainstream one. I was a fan at first, but then everyone else got way better than me and I kind of lost interest. Going back after a while, there are a whole bunch of weird carts that I have never seen before, but it's good to see that my classic strat still works, just being slightly higher level than your opponent. Clash Royale is fun and all, but in my eyes, it doesn't hold a candle to my favorite overly specific genre of app of all time. Competitive games that can be played on a single phone. I'm talking about games like Drive Ahead, where you and your opponent are locked in an arena with each other with a random car. The only way to win is to somehow smash your opponent's head by outmaneuvering them with the satisfyingly floaty car, or just kind of waiting till they get picked up by a UFO and lifted into some spikes. I'm sure there's probably a way to do a wireless versus thing on two separate devices, but nothing will top the drama of two people crowded around a single iPhone 6 duking it out for supremacy. Car's not your style? Do you instead like to settle your beef with a lightsaber in one hand and a gun in the other? Then Stickman Warriors 2 Fight is for you. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called anyway. In this game, you're locked in a box, you can fly, and you just beat the ever-loving crap out of each other. If you manage to hit your opponent on the head, you can make them drop whatever they're carrying, and then you can pick it up, which can lead to some awesome moments where you end up like switching lightsabers or something. The only version that I could find in the app store now for some reason doesn't let you dual wield, and it didn't have guns, which is a shame because we used to set up matches where we'd uh, give each player a gun in both hands, turn off gravity, and just kind of let physics do its thing and place bets on who would win. It's totally fun. But hey, I get it. Sometimes having two people playing a game on a single phone, yeah, it can get a little cramped. Maybe it's not everyone's style. So what if we had four instead? Introducing soccer physics. Or I guess now it's been rebranded to Holy Shoot. Yeah, not as cool, but whatever. This was by far the game that I had the most fun playing during lunches and stuff. It is a 2v2 soccer game where each person controls one player with a single button. That button makes the player jump in whichever direction they're leaning and kick their leg out. It seems super simple, and the, at first the titular physics are so wonky it feels like 90% luck if your guy actually does what you want them to, but after a week's worth of tournaments, my whole lunch table all became one with the janky controls, and from then on out, the game became a test of pure skill and tenacity. And it was great. Those were all the apps that took up the bulk of my time in school, so let's move on to- Hold on, they've got Balloons Tower Defense 6? And they've got Hawkeye, and a Druid, and an Alchemist, and the Super Monkey is Batman? The future of gaming, folks, is here. By this point in my chapter of the battle of gaming in school, I was a senior in high school, and it had become abundantly clear that the students had won. The teachers could do nothing to stop the wave of mobile games, and our game-blocking evasion tactics had become so advanced that they couldn't keep up. And so, in my very last year, they did the equivalent of waving the white flag. They gave every senior in the school their very own Chromebook. Granted, it was probably the single worst laptop that has ever been made, but still, it meant we could play those browser games wherever and whenever we wanted. And yeah, they tried to put some, like, game blocking stuff on there, but, I mean, come on. Now, sure, being able to play some run on my own laptop wherever I wanted is good and all, but the age of mobile games had spoiled us, and we weren't content with single player experiences any longer. But outside of Fireboy and Watergirl, surely we couldn't find a cooperative or competitive gaming experience on the worldwide web of Flash games, right? <laughs> Introducing IO games. 
games that you can play with your friends, each on your own separate Chromebook through the power of the internet. At my high school, we had this thing called Senior Study, which was basically just like a wider section of the hallway that had a bunch of desks and chairs and one random faculty member that was basically just there to make sure you didn't take off, but otherwise didn't really care what you did. During senior year, whenever you had a free period, you'd go here and basically do whatever you want. And for some reason during my senior year, I had like four free periods. So when I wasn't playing Secret Hitler, a dope board game that I might talk about on here someday, you can bet I was playing some sweet IO games with whoever happened to be there. The one you're all probably most familiar with is Agario. That one where you're the circles that eat each other. And that's fine, I guess. But it ain't no Shellshock.io, a first person shooter where you play as eggs. Back in the day, there was only one map that was just a bunch of white blocks and stuff, and we would run around with shotguns, lobbing grenades everywhere. It was great. Now it's just a bunch of weird castle-themed map, and it's filled with kids who are way better than me and always talk about Roblox in the chat, but hey, what are you gonna do? If you were in the mood for something more cooperative, you could always try some deep.io, which is kind of similar to Agario, except your fish and also it's better in every single way. It's got a massive map with islands and caves and biomes and stuff. And when you eat enough, you can evolve into more powerful fish. The idea is that you slowly work your way up the food chain until you become like a shark or a giant squid or something. And me and my friends were like the career tributes in the Hunger Games, hunting as a pack to make the whole server kneel before us. We discovered this one killer strategy where we would feed all the experience we got from killing other people into one person so they could become a giant squid as quickly as possible. The rest of us would become isopods, who are maybe like a third tier creature that's pretty easy to get to and has a special ability where they can curl up into a ball and become pretty much invincible as long as you want. We call ourselves the isopod squad and we would hide out in this one cave on the edge of the map that only had one way in and one way out. And we would feast on the food that naturally spawned there and any foolhardy fish that ventured into our domain. Whenever one of us was in danger, we could just go into a ball and wait for our health to regenerate. And if another giant squid or something came in to challenge our leader, they would die a death of a thousand isopod bites. We would defend this one cave like it was helms deep for three periods straight. And then at the end of the period, we would use all the experience we'd been banking to immediately evolve into giant squids. And then we'd have like seven of us sweeping across the server before logging off. We would do this same strategy across various servers for weeks to the point where strangers would come and join in. And sometimes we'd log on and there would already be an isopod squad started. Unfortunately, going back for this video, I found that they updated the map and added a second entrance to our cave, making it a lot harder to defend. And they also seem to have nerfed the Icepod's ball ability, which I like to think is because of the legacy we left behind in our heyday. Since I had, like, seriously an unreasonable number of free periods by the end of the year, there were some times when I didn't really know anyone else who was in senior study that well. But they would see me playing these IO games and decide to join in. And by the end of the year, we were good pals. I'd been going to school with some of these kids basically my whole life and never really talked to them. But thanks to this dumb fish game, by the end of my senior year, we were finally able to connect. It almost makes you wonder if the teachers and administrators were right to try and block all these games in the first place. Who would have guessed? Me. I, I guessed that. I guessed it. But there was one final twist in this story. One final act that would make this conflict go out not with a whimper, but a big sci-fi bang. I was sitting in senior study one day, as you do, and a friend of mine came over and told me to come to the school's computer lab. Now, in my high school, the computer lab was in the library, but it was in its own sort of like side room where you could close the door. Usually teachers could reserve it to bring their classes there if they wanted to like have them work on an essay or something weird like that. But if nobody was using it, kids could just go in and hang out. It wasn't really a place that kids would hang out in normally. Senior study was more used for that. But today was different. I walked in to find that some kid, some wizard, I don't even remember who it was, but they somehow got Halo 1 working on all the computer lab computers. 
Now, I had never played Halo before. Not only was it a little before my time, I was also more of a Wii guy myself anyway. So, that being said, I was not good at it. But, hot damn, if it was a fun way to spend that one week or so. It was the perfect way to end my lower education career. The ultimate middle finger to all those oldies that tried to keep us down. A victory for gaming, if there ever was one. In college, the whole experience of playing games was totally different because you're not stuck in one building all day. So there's never a situation where you have like a free period and nothing to do. When you're not in class, you can just go home and play a crap ton of Mario Kart, a game that is inarguably better than anything I just mentioned. And hell, now I'm a full grown adult. I can do whatever I want. And so it seems like this epic conflict, or at least my part in it, has come and gone. Looking back, were all these games as fun as I remember? Absolutely not. But I still look back fondly on the glory days of cool math games, and you can bet your bottom dollar that when Balloons Tower Defense 7 comes out, I'll be first in line. And to all my younger viewers who are still fighting the good fight against those dastardly game blockers, Godspeed, good luck, and take it easy. Hello? Hello, is someone there? Richard, you remember to pay the pay the payment for this Airbnb, right? No. Oh Christ! Oh, we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta. Oh, did you forget about me? That's your 